One of our basic assumptions about black holes could be completely wrong. You can find out why black hole physics is being turned on its head in this video, so be sure to stay tuned until the end. And if you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment because that's how we get the algorithm to show this exciting topic to even more people. Thank you, friends, and welcome. Black holes exist not only in the government's coffers, but also in outer space. These mysterious objects in the universe are usually formed when massive stars collapse at the end of their cycle and reach an extremely high density. Gravity then becomes so strong in a certain area that even light cannot escape, leaving no optical information for the observer in space. Hence the name black hole. There are also supermassive black holes with several million and sometimes billions of solar masses that are located in the center of galaxies. At the center of our Milky Way is Sagittarius A star, a gravitational monster of 3.7 million solar masses. That was imaged for the first time in 2022, as you can see here. But what all black holes have in common, according to the prevailing opinion, is a singularity in their center. A singularity is a point in space at which the density is infinitely high and the classical laws of physics cease to apply. So it's a bit like after five liters of beer at the Oktoberfest, where the density is also infinitely high and physics no longer works properly. In the case of black holes, it is assumed that there is a singularity in the center, surrounded by an event horizon. This is the boundary beyond which nothing, not even light, can escape the black hole. The existence of singularities in black holes was first theorized by the work of Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose in the 1960s and 1970s. Their mathematical models and singularity theorems showed that singularities typically occur in the solutions of Einstein's field equations that describe the general theory of relativity. In other words, while singularities have never been observed firsthand in black holes, they correspond perfectly to all major physical theories. And I know many of you will now be saying, Oh no, no in-depth physics, please. But we have to go into it a bit to understand singularities. Einstein's general theory of relativity, developed in 1907 and 1915, describes gravity as the curvature of space-time caused by the presence of matter. It's a little beyond our little Stone Age brain, so we usually think of space-time as a makeshift grid that runs through the cosmos. Black holes are a direct consequence of this theory and represent extreme environments where gravity is so strong that they dent the space-time grid to the maximum. The term singularity, therefore, refers to a point at the center of a black hole, where gravity is virtually infinitely strong and space and time are extremely distorted. In this extreme environment, the laws of physics break down and classical concepts such as time and space lose their meaning. This also reminds me of the last Oktoberfest, but now it is not entirely wrong to point out that it is somehow strange that singularities should exist if the classical laws of physics would no longer work there. Physics predicts something where it would no longer be applicable. The New Zealand mathematician Roy Kerr, who now claims that Stephen Hawking was wrong, probably thought the same thing. <laughs> And Roy Kerr is not just anyone. He found the exact solution to Einstein's field equations for rotating black holes in 1963. So, he himself is a luminary of black hole research. He formulates his doubts quite clearly. Why do so many believe that the star inside must become singular at this moment? Faith, not science. 60 years without a proof, but they believe. So we have a tangible scientific revolution. One of the founding fathers of black hole research contradicts one of the principles of that very research. But why exactly? And what would this mean for our understanding of black holes? Kerr's argument is based on a critical review of the work of Hawking and Penrose. They had mathematically proven that singularities typically occur in the solutions to Einstein's field equation describing general relativity. However, Kerr argues that Rocky and Penrose's interpretation is flawed. Kerr claims that the existence of singularities inside black holes is not necessarily supported by mathematical models or experimental observation. And now hold on tight, folks, because now it's getting real. It's getting highly physical. 
Kerr's main argument is based on a new interpretation of the concept of a fine length, which is used in general relativity to measure the length of curves in spacetime. He argues that the assumption that all light rays inside a black hole end in a singularity is based on a misinterpretation of this concept. According to Kerr's theory, some light rays entering a black hole could actually escape without ending up in the supposed singularity. Instead, they could remain in a complex orbit inside the black hole or even be catapulted out of the black hole without falling into the singularity. And the claim that light rays that are already completely beyond the event horizon could escape the space-time trap again is nothing less than revolutionary. If singularities do not exist inside black holes, what happens to the matter and energy that is drawn into them? What impact would this have on our understanding of physics and the universe as a whole? Physicist Sabine Hossenfelder says, This is perhaps the most surprising development in theoretical physics that I have seen in a decade. It seems that Kerr's argument is almost certainly mathematically correct, and to the shame of many theoretical physicists, myself included, it's not even a particularly difficult argument. Kerr has now developed an alternative solution to Einstein's field equation, and in it, he describes a rotating black hole. This solution has no infinite curvature at its center. In other words, it is not a classical singularity, but a ring-shaped singularity around the axis of rotation. He calculated that a beam of light arrives at the edge of the ring singularity and could then remain at this height. This means that his Kerr solution works without infinitely condensed spacetime, but with a non-infinitely condensed ring singularity. But now comes the trick, which is why many physicists are very skeptical about it. Even if Kerr's assumption were correct, it would not rule out the possibility of a classical singularity existing in addition to the ring singularity. The physicist Domenico Giulini writes in Spectrum der Wissenschaft, Kerr did not take into account that the space-time he chose is perpetuable. If you extend Kerr space-time to the maximum, then his supposed counterexample falls flat. The world line of the light beam can continue its path through the ring. So the world of physics is divided, and although Kerr's idea is exciting and would somewhat demystify the mysterious concept of the singularity, it lacks the ultimate power of proof. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do singularities exist in the center of black holes? And what do you think would be the alternative? What is really behind the event horizon? I'm really looking forward to your ideas and hope that we can get an exciting discussion going in the comments. As soon as something new happens on the subject of black holes, I'll keep you up to date immediately. But of course, this is only possible if you follow my channel. It's absolutely free and you'll never miss a galactic video again. So everyone, press the subscribe button. Thank you very much. By the way, Stephen Hawking predicted something else crazy. Hawking stars, i.e. stars in which a black hole exists. And now some scientists believe that a black hole could exist in our sun. In the video below, we take a closer look at what that would mean for us. Be sure to click on it. And if you want to support my work and get your own plush black hole, please visit my Astro Store. Otherwise, I'd say, see you in the next video. Take care, friends.